Hey there, how's it going? Welcome to another live stream on this fine, fine Monday afternoon. Let's see. Let's get this going here. Hopefully this will show up. Hmm. You let me know if the stream is working. Yep. About three out of three, 22 people. There it is. Okay. <laughs> Wasn't showing up there for a minute. Oh, good. My thumbnail is me putting my headphones on. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. Share to a page. Character workshop. And go. Okay. All right. Welcome, everybody. I hope you can hear me well. Um, as you know, this month is February, and in the U.S., what happens in February, but none other than Valentine's Day. So, um, kind of all of us streamers here on the Pixel Logic live stream channel, we're all going to be focusing on a theme, which is Valentine's Day. So, uh, I found this awesome illustration by Mark, um, from uh, Mark's Cartoon Art Blogspot.com. And uh, his last name is uh, Mark Christiansen. I think that's how you say his last name. It's either Christiansen or Christiansen. I apologize, Mark, if I'm not pronouncing that correctly. So uh, anyway, two characters in one on this one. Um, but the, the, the princess's face is super simple. So uh, hopefully we can do this in maybe two or three live streams. You know, something about that or something like that. Okay. Um, before we get started, I want to show you something that I came across yesterday um, and kind of kind of figured out with the ruler file and the transpose line. So um, it's scale has always eluded me inside of uh, uh, inside of ZBrush, which is why I made this ruler to help out with the unit size and um, give give me a a known size like a bounding box almost you know and that's why um that's why this is a 200 millimeter tall ruler or 20 centimeters tall but j just yesterday i did not realize until now that the export option also uh, is connected to the transpose line and the scene size which is crazy to me but i'm glad i figured I figured it out because now it works. And I got to give a shout out to uh, my friend b -Men from India who helped me figure this out as well. Um, and um, this, yeah, I want to show it to you really quick so you can understand a little bit more. And I also need to give a shout out to Ian Johnson. We talked about this quite a bit, trying to figure it out. And uh, Ian's one of my students and he's going to be a live streamer here pretty soon. So catch him on the, on the flip stream. So uh, hello everyone. Hey, Neil, thank you for showing up today. I really appreciate it. Um, okay, let's, uh, I want to show you this really quickly. So if we have this transpo ugh, transpose line right here, okay, and the scale is set to one, um, if I zoom in, you can see that this transpose line has millimeter tick marks on it, okay? Uh, because what I did is I went into the, I apologize if this is a bit technical. I just want to throw this out there to start start the video with. Um, but uh, you see this scale master. And you can set your scene scale. And you can uh, resize your subtools and, and all of that. And basically what I've done here is I've set the scene size to my ruler size. You can see how uh, it's 200 units tall, which is 200 millimeters tall. Okay, and then the scene size scale is set to one, which is what we want. The problem was when I did this, all of these uh, all of these ticks were showing th they were happening on the centimeter marks, not the millimeter marks. And I just I'm just like, what the heck? And the only way I could get it to work, uh, getting all of these marks to to happen, is to set my scale to 100, and that's that changed the whole thing up. And I was like, what in the heck is going on? So then I found out that here let me move this ruler out so we can see the menu um under preferences 
there's transpose units. I didn't even know this was a thing. Um, and if you see this unit scale, you can change the unit scale to 100. So then you can kind of have your cake and eat it too, which is you can have your scene scale set to one, which if you're exporting out to any uh, other software like, like Blender or not Maya, but like Blender, you can set your scale to one. And if you push it over there, it's gonna be the same size that you want it, it'll be good. Okay, but if you, um, if, if you push it to Maya, you do have to change this scale to 100, okay, to get it to go back and forth. If you're working in meters over in Maya, that's just kind of a, a, a little tip for you there. So anyway, um, sorry, one second. Da, 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 da. Okay. So I, I hope that kind of makes sense if you use, so essentially what I'm trying to say is I'm gonna re, um, redo this, U, this ruler file and I'm gonna uh, put it back out on my website available for download and then I'll send out an email to everyone saying that it's been changed so you can go get the latest version of it that's actually set to millimeters and these tick lines will actually be set to uh, be able to measure. This, this is incredibly powerful if you're gonna be doing stuff for 3D printing because then you can measure the thickness of, of your objects. Um, like if, because you shouldn't be any less than a millimeter for sure. You should be more than a millimeter on any thickness of any object. So then what you can do is you can take this transpose tool and you can measure with it, okay? Now look up here on the very, oh, you can't see it. Here, let me pull this down a little bit. Because uh, my, um, oops, not this, this. Because uh, my user interface or my, my uh, stream thing is covering it. But um, if you look at the top left, right up in this area, okay, let me move my transpose tool. See, you can see that it actually works as a measuring tool. See, 42.46 millimeters. So if you had a model loaded up here, you could drag it from like point over here to point over here and get as close as you possibly can. If you look up here, that's 50 millimeters across right there. And you can see the little tick marks right there. Super powerful, you guys. Yeah, super powerful. So, uh, Anyway, I will be getting that rolled out very soon. So hopefully, uh, hopefully you, you uh, can use that, get it and use it. Because like I said, it's, it works awesome for 3D printing. Okay, now on with the show. <laughs> okay. And what, well, one more thing with this ruler is uh, in the, just so you guys know. So now, now when you, uh, use the transpose line with the new ruler, you will, the, the readout will be in millimeters instead of generic ZBrush units, and the scene will be in millimeters instead of generic ZBrush units, okay? And um, with this, uh, not this one, uh, this one, this 3D print hub, just know that if you ever want to send something um, like an STL out for 3D printing, if you set this export size, to uh, the Y, which is the height, to 200 millimeters, it's going to export all of your objects at the proper size relative to the ruler. The caveat is that you need to keep your objects inside the bounding box of this ruler. So don't hang your objects below this ruler or don't push them above it either because that will throw your bounding box off and it will give you wrong measurements. So make sure you keep it all within this ruler size if you have a character or an object that is taller than 200 millimeters, which is pretty tall, um, then all you have to do is duplicate this ruler and then export and then stack the rulers on top of each other and then export everything out at 400 millimeters instead of 200 and so on. So I hope that makes sense, uh, but that's what this ruler's for. Okay, blah, 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 ruler, ruler. <laughs> okay, so let's get rocking on this. Okay, I have my poly paint on. So I want, I, today I want to uh, sculpt the frog first and then we will sculpt the princess after that. Okay, so we'll see how far we can get.
All right. Thanks, Neil. Appreciate it. Have you updated your bear with your new look? Um, I have, but I need to, I want to, I want to rig it. So I'm still working on it. Yeah, it's getting there. <laughs> okay. And I did get my printer set up and it's about, I, I'm going to be running a test print pretty, pretty soon. I'm pretty excited about that. I bought a used form two a while ago and, uh, finally, finally getting to, uh, prepare to use it. Okay. Let's see. So this frog, let's take a, let's take a look at him. All right. We're going to pull out some, this body shape from the side. Burr. Got to make frog noises while you do it. Burr. <laughs> I got to get some music going. I'm just listening to nothing. I have these headphones on and I'm listening to nothing. I've been into, uh, oh, what is it called? Electro swing. So if you guys want to listen along with me, it's really interesting music. Basically taking swing music and uh, adding synthesizers. <laughs> it's really, really interesting. So here we go. All right. So that's what we'll be listening to today. I wish I could play it without getting nailed for copyright. Hey, Lucas, how are you doing? I've, I've modeled several frogs in the past. I love modeling frogs for some reason. They're just fun. Uh, life lover. Hey, Shane, want to verify if your course is, ra is rather aimed at 3D printing or is it applicable to people who are into modeling characters of, for, for animation? Um, it's both right now. Currently it's both. I'm, I'm thinking about starting to focus on 3d printing a little bit more, but currently it has, uh, how to make a game character out of your high resolution mesh. Um, and it, I, I go through how to retopologize, uh, do UVs and bake the maps and push it over to Marmoset tool bag viewer. So, yeah. Have you worked with designing articulation ball and socket joints in ZBrush yet? Um, I've actually been talking to one of my students, Ian, about that and another one of my students about that. And yes, I'd love to get into it. I haven't yet. Um, there's a there's a good friend of mine, Eamon, who, um, who sculpts on this Pixelogic channel. And he has a, a bunch, like a collection of... Uh, sockets and joints and things like that over on his Gumroad channel that you can check out if you're looking to uh, get into that. I haven't personally. I want to. I just haven't. Oh, Turbo. Hey. Oh, the girl next to the... Yeah. So this girl right here is the one that I walk you through. I show you how to pose her, how to 3D print her, how to create a game character out of her. Um, here, I'll just give you a link so you can check it out on ArtStation on my portfolio. Whoops. Okay, here you go. Here, I can just pull it down. It's really green, so I apologize for the greenness of the background. But uh, yeah, this is uh, this is the character I walk you through how to make in the in the yeah. So this is this is the viewer. This is the game character. Um, so this is the high res version of the character out of ZBrush, uh, rendered in KeyShot. I teach you how to render in KeyShot. Um, so that's pushed over into KeyShot, and then this is Marmoset Viewer right here. I show you how to set this up. So you made your first bake. You're so happy! Yay! Uh, do I use Z Modeler? Yes. So I walk you through how to make this pistol with Z Modeler. Um, I I do go over live booleans. So at the time that I made the course, live booleans weren't a thing. So um, I I just used Z Modeler to make this, and I walk you through that. But there is a few lessons on uh, live boolean, and I want to try and remake this pistol with live booleans because it would be so much easier. But uh, you can click on this inspector. 
and see the topology. So this is like the low res game character with bake, baked maps and everything. So you can see how low res she is. Seriously low res. I wanted to push her uh, almost to uh, cell phone game resolution with her just to try and make her as low resolution as possible and make it look high resolution. And I, and I show you how to do that in the course. So yeah, this is what we walk through. You can move the lighting around too by holding shift and dragging. I love Marmoset Viewer, it's really nice. So anyway, you can check that out on my, uh, on, the, on the link that I sent out. Okay. Uh, you try, you tried Amon's brushes? But they're all messed up. Hmm. Interesting. I'll have to let him know. Or you should let him know. <laughs> okay. I'm just making sure I didn't miss any. I've been listening to electro, electro string for three years now. Insane stuff. Or even electro swing parties and dance classes. Awesome. Yeah, I used. To, there was one particular band and I can't remember the name of it, but that I listened to a long time ago. And I didn't kind of realize that that was a, they were kind of kicking off a whole genre or whatever. So um, yeah, it's crazy. I love it. So good. It just, you, you can't not be happy listening to that kind of music. <laughs> hey, Rick, how are you? Kate, hello. Thank you. Okay, let's just keep rocking here. Making a frog butt. It's not every day you get to make a frog butt. Oh, hey, Jake. Sorry, I get messages on my watch and I'm good friends with uh, Jake from Form Labs. Are you out in Florida, X Disney? I am X Disney, but I'm in Utah. I did not work in film, I worked on games. So I worked on uh, Disney Infinity. Okay, I kind of want these legs to kind of go back like this, because it's funny. And we'll shape them in a minute. These legs are going to be tricky. Let's see. Is that how I want to do them? Hey, what's up, Angry? Utah where the skiing is awesome. Yes, usually it is, but not this year. <laughs> I mean, it's okay this year, but oh my gosh, we've been having a dry winter. And uh, which causes avalanches. And we've been having some crazy avalanches lately here. And um, unfortunately people have been caught in them. Not good. Yeah, avalanches, bad, bad for skiing. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of uh, people who, who heed, who do, well, do not heed the warnings. Because you'll hear on the news that it's, you know, horrible avalanches right now. So don't go in the backcountry. Even with like the beacons and stuff, beacons aren't going to save you. They're just going to be able to find your body. <laughs> hey, Tim. Yeah, I thought it was pretty fun. Thanks. Yeah, it's made by uh, Mark Christiansen. Christiansen or Christiansen? I'm not sure. I think it's Christiansen. It reminds me of the old uh, 
like Bullwinkle cartoons. Oh, excuse me. A little bit. Like, yeah, just the old, like, Bullwinkle and Natasha and that kind of stuff. Pretty fun. Can I do a model for a simple helmet? Uh, not today, May maybe sometime, but basically, uh, yeah, fractured fairy tale. There you go. Kind of reminds me of that. You may be able to find a helmet that somebody else has made in, in past live streams, but I usually don't do hard surface sculpting myself. Sunbury, you're welcome. Thanks for hanging out. I don't know what a, a FNAF model is. Sorry. Enough? Yeah, Peabody and Sherman. Those are my fave. All right, let's get these fun little hands going. Uh... What would be your dream project to work on? Ooh, um, let's see. You know, uh, oh, I'm gonna sneeze. Hold on a second. All right, thanks for the, thanks for the. Oh, Five Nights at Freddy's. Um, no, I, 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 I typically stay away from copyrighted things usually, and I'm not a huge fan of Five Nights at Freddy's. I mean, I can kind of see the appeal, but. Uh, yeah, probably not. Maybe if I was more of a fan of Five Nights at Freddy's. My daughter is. So, um, yeah, so when I worked on Disney Infinity, that was, that was kind of a dream come true because I was able to work on, um, like the film characters. I, I always wanted to be in film, you know, and I ended up in games. I play a lot of games, so I, it's not that I wasn't, um, wasn't, wasn't that I wasn't happy going into games. I actually enjoy it quite a bit, but, um, I, the reason I like Infinity so much is because I got to work on so many different, like, really amazing licenses, like Star Wars and Marvel and Disney and Lucas and, you know, I already said Star Wars, but, um, like, all of those, uh, all of those licenses, you know, that's like, yeah, that, that just doesn't happen. So, um, I, I kind of, uh, feel like I've already worked on my dream project. And, uh, but if, if, if I were to work on a different one, um, what would I want to work on? If, if they ever did like a bringing Avatar, the last airbender to into 3d, I would love to work on that. I know they're doing a live action version. I'm not, I don't know how confident I am in that, but. Okay, do auto groups.
Hey, big back. Yep, there's, uh, yeah, Neil just posted my portfolio there. Stitch and Donald were your favorite. Those both were sculpted by, uh, by my buddy um, Ian Jacobs. You can also find his portfolio on ArtStation. So again, it's Ian Jacobs. I have seen the fan game, Ryan. It's cool. Yeah, I, I've played it inside of Dreams, that one. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I saw it in early, an early, early work in progress. There we go. Those legs were a little bit too, uh, too giant. <laughs> I need to update with, uh, I don't have all of my work up on my portfolio. I really need to update that some more. Um, how can I fit an image in the background? Like, are you talking about this right here? Yeah, this is this is a spotlight right here. And basically, all you do is go to texture and load load it into into here. So you just go texture import, bring it in, and then you click the image like this, and then you push this button right here, and it will put it up here. Uh, no, I made Spider-Man. I believe Spider-Man. Is Spider-Man in my portfolio? I think he is. Should be. Okay. Yeah, I like, I, I just don't use Pure Ref too much. That's just a personal, personal pref, pref ref. <laughs> I just like, I like, I like having it just right here. And then I can easily eye drop it and change the opacity on it really easily. Yeah, that's just personal preference, but I like Pure Ref too. What kind of games? Hey, what's up, HD? Um, well, right now I am playing Immortals Phoenix Rising and I'm having a blast with it. Okay. That game's a lot of fun. It's like an ode to uh, the, the latest Zelda game. Let's see, what am I trying to do? Oh, there we go. I just need to reset this. Okay, let me clip this. Hopefully this works. <laughs> Always does that and then you just smooth it out. Whoops. <laughs> it's like I was giving him teeth. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. You want to use image for a model like in the background? Um, you would you would have to use um it's under oh let me find it. Da -da 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 document i thought it was draw yeah okay so let me show the floor and you have to put it on these planes back here i i normally don't do it but if you want to do it that's kind of how you do it 
you go to uh you go to map front and back here up and down left and right and you click on here and you put a texture on it so you can see it right there see that that's probably what you're wanting to do something like that it's under draw and then under um right here Yeah, breath. It's it's very very close to Breath of the Wild, but it is um, there's enough of it that's different. It has a lot of puzzle stuff. The grass and the rendering is very much like uh, Breath of the Wild, um, but it's very it's based off of Greek mythology, um, and it's it's got a lot of humor in it, which I like a lot. And just the gameplay is very satisfying, like heavy hitting um like you feel you feel cool when you're swinging that axe around yeah it's pretty good i don't know if i'd call me grandmaster but yes you're welcome <laughs> grandmaster um let's see what else what else um have i ever m messed around with vr sculpting i have and I'm not a big fan. It's fun. It's fun to play with. Don't get me wrong. It's fun to, it's like a, it's almost like a gimmick to me right now. Um, because it's just not quite, it doesn't have the same feeling as sculpting in ZBrush. To me, it feels almost like sculpting with uh, shaving cream. It even has that sound. It's like, you know, when you're doing, and um, it's just, yeah, it's just okay. It's just okay. It's what I really, really like about it is being in the same room with your sculpt and having it life size and being able to like get in there and like check out the details. But it's way too fast for me. Like the the uh, the way you lay down strokes and stuff. It's just you can you can mess up your model very very easily and it's too free flowing form. I like more structure like this. So um, yeah, that's my that's my uh, humble opinion on virtual sculpting oh robin you are yeah yep you're you are correct that would be amazing Uh, Adrian, I, I want to do both, but it may take me several, uh, several sessions to do. So this, this month's live streaming theme on the Pixelogic live channel is, uh, is Valentine's Day. So I thought this was close enough to a, a Valentine-ish theme that uh, it works and I like it. It's funny. We use Scopus Pro as usual in the... And could you use Z Remesher? Sometimes I saw that you paint directly on Sculptors Pro. Uh, yeah, I sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Um, I will most likely use Sculptors Pro on this. I'm not sure. kind of like a sad frog don't be sad frog thanks hd appreciate it we'll see we're we're just uh yeah block it out in the block out phase a lot of people tend to rush don't rush take your time it's very important to get correct. I, I feel like I kind of have to rush sometimes when I'm doing the live stream, you know, just because it's more, it's more entertaining if you do it a little bit quicker. 
I'm also always self-conscious about that. Uh, let's see. Okay, let me know if I missed any questions, you guys. <laughs> That's true. Mr. Twister, hello. Hello from Russia. Thank you. Oh, awesome. I have 199 viewers today between across all streams, so that's awesome. My average is uh, typically by the end of the stream, I have about three, like 250 people, something like that, which blows my mind every time. Hello from Italy, hello. Italy, what time is it in Italy right now? If you hold down control and drag on an arrow on this gizmo, it will duplicate your object. Oh, thanks. Hey, Tom, welcome. Another thing too is um, you'll notice that I, um, I, after you duplicate an object, it will put it into the same poly group as the object that you duplicated. And usually with fingers, I like to keep them in separate polygroups. So what I'll do is I'll invert the mask. And then if you hit control W, it will put whatever is masked into its own polygroup. So that is, uh, that's a little trick for you. 2032 in the evening. It's almost midnight there, huh? Wow. Really pleasure to see you. Well, thanks for stopping by. <laughs> I see a lot of artists just use a sphere for the starting point for their sculpts. I generally prefer to use a mixture of spheres and other shapes before I remesh. Uh, Adrian, there is not an industry standard. Your, your standard is your standard. People start wherever, you know, it's the end result that is the industry standard. So it really, it really doesn't matter. How have you done the polygon net? Uh, it's just, it, it's, it comes with the, the primitive objects that I'm putting in the scene. So I'm not really paying too much attention about poly count. It's 110 in India. Holy cow. <laughs> you got to be up by four. Oof. Well, good luck, but thanks for hanging out. <laughs> okay. South Africa. Wow, all over the world. That's awesome. Yeah, 
if you were to ask me back in the 80s or even in the 90s that I would be able to do what I'm doing today, I would have called you a liar. <laughs> it's uh, the internet really makes things. It's quite incredible. Let me make these a little thicker. I like that the sculpt is kind of different this week. Yeah, a little bit. How are you doing, Anastasia? Uh, was it difficult to sculpt at the beginning for you? Um, yes and no. So, um, are you going to get those toes to point? Like, yeah. Uh, I'm, I don't know if I'll get them like super pointy because I always kind of think of these characters that I want to 3D print them and super pointy toes like this wouldn't print very well. It, they could break. Kind of like the tip of the sword of the girl back here. So I, I will uh, usually uh, make them, oh, I want them to kind of hint at being super pointy, but yeah, I'm not. I don't take them all the way. Let's see. Iron Wild. All right. Watching homeworking. Awesome. I was starting to answer a question and I forgot. Oh, was it difficult to sculpt at the beginning? Um, okay, so I've been doing a, like traditional box modeling, like like pushing points, you know, like uh, extruding and cutting and all that kind of stuff. I've been doing this for about 23 years. I started my career back in 1998. Um, and as a, as a modeler slash animator and... Um, it wasn't until Disney Infinity, actually, that I started to actually do sculpting in ZBrush. And it was hard to get to kind of think differently than you would, like, say, uh, modeling in Maya or something like that when you're actu actually sculpting. It's, it's, a lot, it's kind of a different mindset. But, um, but the art's the same. It's basically the same. So it wasn't, it wasn't too extremely difficult. I just need to learn the tools. Can I, I can sculpt a face with an image like a blueprint, but I can't sculpt rotated faces. How do I solve this problem? Uh, practice is how you solve it. Because I used to use like the front and the side as well, but um, it's, it, it's actually a hindrance um, because the three quarter view of the face tells you the most information about the, the volumes and the forms. So when you're asking a concept artist to draw a front and side profile for you, you're actually kind of asking them to do your job and interpret their drawing. Um, but as a sculptor, you should be able to interpret a three quarter view drawing because it will, uh, it will keep the life in the drawing. The life should transfer over to your, to your sculpt. So, um, yeah, that's, that's, uh, I would practice. <laughs> uh, you're going to scope now? Awesome. Yeah, you guys should all be sculpting along with me if you can. If you, ha if you have the means, I highly recommend it. Okay. Okay, why isn't that working? There it goes. <laughs> like, why isn't that brush working? Sometimes you'll have hidden hidden masks that you can't really see until it's too late. Very first tutorial modeling Jean something. That was a famous tutorial back then. You had to switch between your 3D software and the web page. I don't know that I can remember that one. Make this bigger.
<laughs> you're putting off doing retopo. Cannot blame you. Cannot blame you. I love this music I'm listening to. I wish I could play it. Messing around with Arnold. Awesome. Yeah, that's a lot of... I have not rendered with Arnold. Is that from the princess? Uh, I think I think it is... Uh, it's a version of Princess and the Frog. I mean, it's kind of the, the story of, you know, when... The princess kisses the frog and he turns into a prince kind of a thing, so. Yeah, copyright safe version. It's a, it's kind of an original-ish. The idea is not original, but the, the interpretation is, the design is. Joan of Arc tutorial on 3D Total. I remember 3D Total. So I first got my start doing tutorials on um, 3D Tutors. But I, I would also buy some tutorials from 3D Total. <laughs> Miguel, uh, no. <laughs> Sorry. Although funny, but no. You looked at Sketchfab for showing your models online. I use, uh, I have, but I use Marmoset Viewer because I like the controls a little better. I'm doing a Rabbit Warrior based on Brian Chucky's book. Such great stories for 3D. Yeah, nice. Reason why I find it so easy and relatable to change, change the method is because I'm so used to box modeling, sculpting a lump of clay by pulling and pushing always kept me away from sculpting. Glad you found 3D Character Workshop. I'm glad you did too. Thanks for the shout out. That makes, that makes me super happy. Appreciate it. All right, these eyebrows will be easy to make. <laughs> I want it pointy, but not super long. Maybe this is this is uh, the reason I used uh, separate primitives is so I can. Um, it's non-destructive. I can pull this out if I want to, which I do. If it was connected, it would be a little more difficult. Model the land speeder from Star Wars. Cool. I should get back to ZBrush. 8 gigs should be okay. Um, ZBrush is CPU intensive, not RAM intensive. I mean, yes, it, it uses RAM but not as much as you would think. Not as much as, say, like Photoshop or uh, some other programs like that. So you should be okay. Um, so that being said, the more cores you have on your CPU, um, the better. I got into modeling by messing around with VR chat. My son plays around with that the game. Allowed you to upload your custom-made models and play as them. Yep, yep. 
he he's been bugging me to see if I could help him make some. <laughs> Okay, it looks like I have some weirdness happening in between these eyeball shapes. Can you see this little fin? This comes from mirror and welding. Have to get going now. Thanks for the stream. Yep, you're welcome. Thanks for hanging out. Try to come back later. Not, yep, you can always watch the recording later. But thanks for hanging out live. It makes it fun. Okay. Get rid of these guys here. <laughs> hey, what's up, NLT? How you doing? Haven't seen you for a while. Your kid would have the best VR chat characters. <laughs> Maybe. So here's how you uh, fix symmetry issues if you're having them. Um, so you can see this little kind of fin sticking up here, right? Well, if I drag it, I don't need a mask. If I drag it to the right, something like this, just kind of cross that over and over here. Then you hit mirror and weld. It might not work because it's partially hidden. So mirror and weld, that will fix it. See, they went away. Okay, there's still some down in here. Did you work with a render farm? Uh, not really, because I haven't worked on a, I haven't worked on a film. And you don't really need render farms in games for 3D collectibles. So I haven't really needed to. I know what they are and I know how they work, but there we go. I've never used one myself. Come on, grab a hold of that middle one. What's going on? There we go. Hey, McBob, time warp? What do you mean time warp? Oh gosh, I keep forgetting to Unhide it all. Uh, still didn't work. When you said to, did I say drap it? Drape it? Drap it to the right? <laughs> oh, drag it to the right. I got you. Sorry. The, I'm a little slow sometimes. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna split this off to its own to its own sub tool so I can focus on this down in here. Uh, bu -bu -bu. Oh, was it a different? No, it works, okay. So you can do a split hidden. Split hidden is essentially like a split unmasked points, but it's with hidden instead of masked, so. Pretty froggy when I try to make something in the ZBrush. In the ZBrush. I like to call it the ZBrush. Uh, I get something disgusting. Gaining experience? Yes. That's the way to do it. I want to say <laughs> in my cheesiest voice, watch and learn. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But yeah, it's, that's, that's how I did it. I watched people do it. That's the best way to learn. Let's turn off topological. Am I using, a, I'm on a desktop PC. Oops, let's see this side. Okay, if I, oh, let me turn off local symmetry. Mirror and weld. There we go, did that fix it? Yeah, there we go, okay. You can turn on dynamic subdivisions to actually see if it really did fix it. There you go. Yeah, nothing wrong with the laptop. Use whatever you have 
available. Do you prefer Mac or Windows to run ZBrush? Um, I use a PC, but I do have a Mac. I use my Mac more for like video editing and music creation. Um, but I use ZBrush and all my 3D stuff on my PC. I've been a PC person for most of my life. All right. Uh, let's see. Merge down. There we go. Okay, let's bend. Let's bend some of these. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with Max. Like I said, whatever you have at your disposal, that's what you use. The key is doing it. Okay, let's see. I'm going to show you the bend transpose trick again. I usually show this in my streams if I need to bend something. I'm just going to move this over here like so. I want to bend these toes down. So I mask this section off. And then if I, if you have to be on move, okay, and you have to have the transpose tool selected and drawn down the length of your object. Then if you hold alt and you drag in this white circle, it will actually bend like this. And then you can rotate it down like so. And then you have those nice little bendy toes. Yay, fun, okay. <laughs> comics i'm a dabbler i i don't uh i don't do anything professionally music musically from mesopotamia hello welcome yeah he's getting kissed man he's happy He's a happy froggy. Bend. So I'm gonna I want a little bit bigger bell curve here. Thanks, Neil. Hmm. Maybe. No. I think that'll work. Yeah, there we go. I like the character on uh, My Hero Academia called Froppy. This kind of frog reminds me of Froppy a little bit. Three <laughs> frogs look is so real looking. <laughs> Let's go back. Love this. I'm uh, for those of you just joining us, I'm not playing it for you, but I'm listening to Electro Swing. So you can just type in Electro Swing on face in uh, YouTube and find some awesome Electro Swing music. It's like a mixture of 1920s swing and uh, synth, like, yeah, synth pop or whatever you want to call it. Really fun. I like the ones with the really hoppy beat. 
and the old style instruments like clarinets and stuff all right i want to get his uh try and push his belly make his belly a little fatter here on the from the front you got to get that croaky look you know Uh, is the same usage of the move tool instead of the transpose tool? I don't understand that question particularly. Um, so the gizmo is what this is known as. This is the gizmo. This has all of the exact same functionality as the transpose tool, which you can access by clicking this button right here. That's where you pop it to the different things. Um, the only the main difference uh, that you don't get with the gizmo that you do get with the transpose line is it's actually a line for one. And um, that bend trick does not work with gizmo because you don't have a line, you don't have a center thing in order to bend it with. Um, now, a lot of people like to use the modifier underneath here um, that's called like bend curve modifier that you can attach to an object and bend it that way. That's just a different way of doing it. Um, I think it's, to me, sometimes it's faster to just set up a transpose line and bend the, the finger down the length of it. Because since the toes were turned at a 45 degree angle like this, if I were to try and put that bend modifier on that toe, the bounding box wouldn't work because the toe is turned 45 degrees. I would have to turn it uh, parallel with the world axis and then put the bend modifier on it bend it and then rotate it back so i'd rather just kind of bend it with the transpose tool there you go nope you can't you cannot bend with gizmo <laughs> okay let's uh but you can you can bend with a bend modifier if that makes sense Same, but different. <laughs> Transpose tool is hard to control. It isn't if you uh, practice with it and understand how it works. Um, just for example, I, all of these characters, the, the Disney Infinity characters that I worked on, we didn't have the gizmo. In fact, when I recorded my course, the gizmo wasn't out yet. So I teach how to use the transpose line in my course. Um, I do have lessons on the gizmo, but um, for the most part, it's the transpose line. And I posed all of these characters using the pose master with the transpose line. So once you get used to it, it's difficult to learn, but once you get used to it, it's quite powerful. And as I teach my students, if you think about it like a wrench, then uh, in the pivot, the tip is just the pivot point. Here, I'll show you really quick. So say if I want to bend this leg at the, the elbow and I wanted to bend it forward, basically what you would do is uh, switch to the transpose line. You can hold down control and kind of drag down the appendage like this to get a nice, uh, a nice blend of the mask right there. And then we can clear the mask off of these legs. Now, if you think about the transpose line, it doesn't have to aim down the length of the appendage in order to bend it. All you need to pay attention to is this pivot point where you want the elbow to bend. And this, this end can be anywhere you want. And then you have to, um, hey, what's up, B-Man? And then you have to uh, crank it from the camera angle. So the camera angle matters. So if I hit R for rotate, then I can grab this end dot here and I can rotate it. See how I'm rotating it? It doesn't matter where this, this transpose line does not have to be like, like right here, like a temporary bone, like you would think it needs to be. I mean, that works too, but it doesn't matter. You can have it clear over here and rotate it, right? It doesn't matter where the end is. It just matters what, where this pivot point is and uh, that's it and that your camera is rotated to the proper location. That's all you need to know, and it should work out good. Okay, so I hope that helps you. So B-Man, at the start of this uh, 
start of this live stream, I was giving you some shout outs as far as like helping me figure out the, tr the, the transposed tick marks. <laughs> I just modeled a grandpa on ZBrush and now I want to retopologize it. Should I Dynamesh all the sub tools? Uh, so it's a single geo and then retop it. No, it doesn't matter. You can send all of your pieces and parts wherever you want to retop. Oh, the only thing that really matters, um, because you can retop on in any, any mesh, it doesn't matter if it's connected or not. You will want to send it all over at the same time. So an OBJ is not going to work, but, uh, FBX will, if you want to send multiple objects over, um, or you can import the OBJs one at a time until you have them all in there. Um, you could merge them all together and you don't need to send over your highest resolution. So if you're going to send it over, you know, to like Maya to retopologize, Maya doesn't really handle millions of polys very well. So you could either, um, if you have subdivision levels, go to some lower subdivision levels before you send it over. Uh, and then, or you can, uh, you don't have to dynamesh it. You can, um, you can decimate it or, you know, there's a different, different things you can do to get it lower because all you're concerning yourself with is the, the ob just, you're just trying to give yourself a surface to draw, um, topology on top of, if that makes sense. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> I don't know this software, but it looks interesting. Ah, uh, thanks. Yeah, this is ZBrush. And it is a digital sculpting software. That's what it's known for. From Barcelona. Hey, Jet. How you doing? And Jai, this is ZBrush. You, you are watching this live on Pixelogic's either YouTube, Facebook, or Twitch channel right now. Pixelogic, they are the owners and creators of ZBrush. And I'm just a volunteer showing how to use the software. And if you like this user interface and these brushes, you can go grab them on my website at 3dcharacterworkshop.com. It's right here. Um, or up, wait, it's not up top. I guess I guess I, I need to type that back up there. <laughs> anyway, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. You can grab these brushes. I also teach an online course if you're wanting to learn how to make characters for either games or 3D printing. Which I'm starting to move more towards um, teaching the collectible side of things and moving away from games a little bit. I've mentioned that before in my live streams. Um, that's that's really where my happy place is. I guess call me an, an old grumpy guy that doesn't want to deal with the technology anymore. <laughs> that's true. Yep, yep, that is very true. Uh, J Murph. Um, yep, you don't have to export anything. You can just retopo in ZBrush now. That's totally true. And it's a viable thing you can do. I need to do more of it and teach it teach it to myself. Okay, let's see. Let's take a look and see how close we are here. I think I want to squish his body front to back a little bit more. Make him a little uh, pudgier. Pudgier? Is that a thing? Pudgier. When doing a lot of details on a subtool after dynameshing, do you start using subdivision levels? Um, so, okay. So, yeah, that, that's kind of getting a bit, a bit in the weeds technically as far as like trying to explain it. It's that, that's kind of, um, my course is paid. It's definitely paid. Okay, hold on a second. Um, oops, I want to redo this. Hold on a second. So I, what I was going to say is I don't really Dynamesh anymore. I use Sculptress Pro, and Sculptress Pro is very similar to Dynamesh. Um, 
it's just a it, it gives you more options because you never run out of geometry with Sculptress Pro, whereas with DynaMesh you do. And if you do run out of geometry, you have to rebuild your entire mesh. And I don't like that because it gets rid of your details. Okay, and I kind of want to tuck his legs in a little bit more. Sculptress Pro. Yeah, I'm going to be using it here in a second. You'll see what I'm talking about. And then later on, I will either retopologize this by hand if I'm going to be animating it. It's not a plugin, it comes with ZBrush. It's right here. This is Sculptress Pro right here. Um, it's basically dynamic topology. If you've ever used a software that has dynamic topology, it's dynamic topology. So, yeah. So it will dynamically generate geometry as you sculpt is how it works. And I'll be, I'll be doing it here shortly. I, I believe it, it started in 2020. It's in 2020. There we go. That's cool. That's Mo better. Okay, but before I pull his legs in like that, I'm actually going to pull him out and it's going to look funny for a minute because I'm going to blend all this together and then pull his legs back in. My professors never taught it because it was new. Um, it's a glorious thing. I'll show you here in a minute. Okay, I'm gonna pull these arms out. When I do that, I'm looking for the armpit to be high enough that when I pull his arms back down, that, uh, yeah, it'll work. You have 2020, well, you should update to the latest version because it's free. <laughs> Yeah, that's the glorious thing about ZBrush is the updates are free or they have been up until now. Okay, here we go. You guys ready? Let's do a save as. Let's call this uh, Mark Princess Frog 01. Okay. Okay. Well, if you want to get better, you got to practice. You got to get in there. So hopefully you get excited and you want to mess with it again. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to stitch these all these objects together. And this is actually using functionality of Sculptress Pro, but not or of of sorry, of uh, live boolean, but without doing any booleans. <clears throat> Since 2018, interesting Neil. Yeah, it's been in there for a while. Okay. So I want to center Oh, and put it clear down to the bottom here. Whoop. Oh goodness, hold on a second. So here I'm gonna show you guys a little tip. If you ever, uh, if, you're, if your camera ever just kind of zooms or orbits out of control, like if you went to orbit and it just kind of goes off the screen really easily, um, the way you can reset your camera target point is just by simply touching anywhere on your object. I usually hold down shift and then tap so it doesn't mess up my surface at all. And then I zoom out and then uh, rotate and it will rotate around that point. So that's, that's kind of a way to reset your camera. Okay, where is my gizmo? There it is. All right. You want to have your gizmo centered before doing this. And then you click on this gear and you click remesh by union. And I, I did that a little too soon. I'm gonna undo that and turn off dynamic and take a look at all these. Uh, okay. I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna subdivide it once and then get rid of the lower subdivisions so it's a little bit uh, cleaner. And I'm going to try Z remeshing this. Maybe. Maybe not. I'm just going to leave it. Let's do it. All right. 
because sometimes what you want is you're looking for the density between the objects to be close to the same. If you have one object that's very, very light and another one that's very heavy, the stitches are going to be kind of messy. So the closer that your densities are to each other, the more of a uh, nice stitch you're going to get. Do you use live booleans when sculpting? Yeah, sometimes. Just when working with multiple poly groups. Uh, I, I use it sometimes. Okay. So let's do this again. Remesh by union. And you'll see all the stitches. See those? Those little triangles all over the place. That's essentially getting rid of the interior geometry and then stitching all the pieces together. Okay, if I click on this, hit accept. Now we have our base. And I saved it, so if I ever need to go back, I can open the old save file and go back. Okay, so now it's, uh, it's sculptress time. So let's turn symmetry back on. By default, it will turn symmetry off when you do that function. So don't forget to turn it back on, right, Neil? Okay, hey, what's up, Dan? Thank you. Okay, so we need to pick a brush that uses um, Sculptress and turn it on. And then we will go to uh, Stroke Sculptress Pro. I turn off Adaptive Size and then move this down a little bit and then try it. Okay, so that's about the density that I want. See, I'm looking for the, the, the size of the squares here. And that's pretty close to what I want. So another thing I can do is um, I can tessimate this. Now, tessimate is kind of like flood fill. It will fill this entire thing with, with bit, essentially what's Sculptress Pro. And tessimate is over here under the geometry menu. And you can see it right here, tessimate. Now... This button's kind of confusing. I don't hit the button, I just move the slider. And as soon as I do, it's gonna to start to tessimate this. And you can see it's getting rid of some of this geometry, but that's okay because the old mesh is in the cache. So it, it's looking at that. And I can get this even lower or denser because I wanna keep this. I don't wanna lose my toes, my frog toes. Alejandro, hey, hello. Okay. Are you the Alejandro that I know? I can't remember your last name. <laughs> okay. Okay, now that we have it stitched together and tessimated, um, if you're like a... If, you're, if you've ever done painting, like canvas painting, um, there's this stuff called gesso that you can kind of paint on your canvas to fill in all the fibers and get it ready for painting. I kind of, I kind of treat uh, Tessimate as you're kind of filling out your whole canvas and getting it ready to use with Sculptress Pro. So your density is kind of even, equal across the whole thing. Um, and yes, it will mess up some very smallish parts, but that's okay. Uh, we can um, change it later. And sometimes you'll see, see how you, you can kind of see these polygons across the surface. All you need to do with that is just run your smooth brush over the top of it, and it's good to go. Can you rig this? No, you can't. Um, you, I would have to do some stuff to it before you, I, I would be able to rig it, specifically retopologize it. Now you want to be the same density as your tessimate, so make sure you adjust that and don't clear it out. Let's crank up this uh, smooth. Is there a way to group objects without merging down the model? Just want to move it as a group. Um, I could have moved it all together as a group before I uh, merged it together. It was all in the same subtool, so that was totally possible without stitching it together first. See, now I can, uh, I can blend these things together. Now I want to keep this cut. Okay, 
One thing I kind of wished I had done is leave this mouth open so I can get a stronger cut through here, but that's okay. We'll just leave it. We'll deal with it. Um, I, I will typically work in skin shade just because I can see my model. Like I can see the silhouettes very clear. Um, and it's good to live stream with because um, people can see it on their screens pretty clear. Um, if I want to check my surfaces though, I will switch over to one that I like called uh, Zebro Gray or Zebro Modeling. It's uh, meshes that I found online. See how this isn't quite as, you can't see it as well, but you can you can really see the surface quality. You can see where you need to clean up and where you need to smooth and things like that. Hey, what's up, Sean? <laughs> yep, finished is better than perfect. You may have heard that before. Okay, let's bend it back. So remember how I bent it out so when I stitched it together, it wouldn't stitch this closed? Because if it was too, if it was too much, too close together, it would have stitched it. I probably could have bent this um, lower leg out so it wouldn't have stitched it this much right here too. And then I can move that back, but that ah, is what it is. Keep going. Like I said, finished better than perfect. Okay, so let's, that's too far down the leg. Okay, so I wanna get the camera angle to a position here hold on a second just cleaning this stuff up a little bit thanks Jai appreciate it okay so from here I think I'll get the best masking from this angle But as you'll notice, it also masks the leg behind it, which I don't want. Let's see. I actually want to bend it from a different location. Right here. trying to clear the mask off of this back leg. Can you export the material like you can with poly paint with Gozi? No, and you, I, Tom, honestly, I wouldn't want to. Um, the materials inside of ZBrush are not ones that you want to take with you. Um, the, uh, I, I kind of picture them like a shell, like something that is you, you're putting over the top of a material uh, or over the top of your color, let's say. Um, and then I, I always just create new materials wherever I'm going. So if I'm going to take it to substance, I'll create new materials over there. Let's go back to skin shade so you can see this, so you guys can see what I'm doing here. Gaming mania can be, it can be for sure. Uh, let's see, is there a good video out there? that is in-depth explains all of the stock brushes in ZBrush? Not that I know of. Um, the, I know you're asking about the stock brushes. I have made a video that covers all of my brushes here. When you download the brushes, there's a video on the download page and I walk you through that, but, but not that I know of specifically.
Uh, so ZBrush is more to make presentable models at high resolution, but not meant for rigging. Yes and no. So um, ZBrush is more about making high resolution figures that yes, you can then uh, render. Um, like, like I think I showed earlier in my stream, my Cape model. Um, but then you can take those high resolution models. Well, you can either retopologize them in ZBrush or you can take them to another uh, software like Maya or something like that and do the retopology over there. And retopology is the thing that will get your model um, animatable. So you need to rebuild your geometry with um, deformation in mind is what you're going to be thinking about. Um, and what that allows you to do is it allows you to not have to focus on the topology as you're sculpting. You can just focus on the art and make it look good. And then after it looks good, then you can draw the topology on the top and make it deform good, if that makes sense. And to me, uh, retopology can be, it's, it's very, uh, it's puzzling. So it's like a puzzle. And um, it's very, it's kind of therapeutic to me to do retopology because it's, it's almost like you're doing a crossword puzzle, you know, like sitting there listening to some good music and just kind of zone out and do it. Just bake the texture from the high resolution model and then get a low poly version, which is usually the retopologized version and just put and put the baked high res on the low poly to get the detail. Yep. And that is exactly the workflow that I teach in my course. So I teach you how to bake maps inside Marmoset and a substance painter or and or your choice. Um, let's see. So if you're interested in learning that workflow, you can check that out. Hold on one second. I'm just I'm just going to show you this really quickly. So where is it? Um, okay. okay. I'm just showing you inside my course. So this is what this is what it looks like in my course. And this is uh, these are all the lessons that are in there. And if you go all the way down to game character, see retopology, how you do the face, the hair, the body, the teeth and tongue, how to do UVs, how to UV a, a hard surface, how to bake maps and how to create a final game asset. So um, and this is the character. Yeah, so anyway. There you go, little preview if you're interested. <laughs> okay. Is it on Gumroad? No, it's not. It's on uh, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. It's it's not a Gumroad course. It's a full on it's big. So it's not it's not some little and it comes with a community um Yeah, which I can show you a preview of the community if you'd like too. Here, let me just show you the community. I'm pretty proud of this community, so I like to show it off. <laughs> if it'll load. There we go. So here we go. So it has a top row, kind of like ZBrush Central. And uh, this is student work. This is all student work. None of it's my work. This is all student. So... Yeah, awesome stuff. So if you want to learn how to create characters like this, feel free to join us, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. All right. Here's my little plug. <laughs> Does Marmoset baking from, from Substance Painter maps work well together? Uh, so... Yeah, you can import maps that you've baked inside of Marmoset over to Substance Painter. Um, the biggest difference between Substance Painter and Marmoset is Marmoset gives you uh, cages to work with and that are editable, so you can really dial in your problems if you're having problems. So, and again, this is the uh, 
Pixelogic live channels and we're, we're streaming ZBrush, so I don't really like to talk about other software too much. Um, I can answer quick questions, but yeah, you can keep, keep your questions mostly about ZBrush, then I'd appreciate that. Is there a free a, a free course for free? No. Sorry. I give away my brushes for free. But my main course, I've 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 put way too much work into it to make it free. I'm sorry. And that is what I do for a living now. So um yeah. That's how I feed my family. Uh, yeah, 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 it is. It is still out there. I need to take it down because it's so outdated, but it's, it's still out there. $20. Yeah. Is there any, there's a lot of tutorials for ZBrush for beginners. Uh, my friend Pablo has one over at ZBrush guides that you can check out. He's another streamer on here. And uh, my course has beginner, it, it takes you from beginner to advanced, um, if you're interested in that as well. Yeah, this is my free course, you're watching right now. But uh, my live streams versus my course, um, I just kind of give you very, very light instruction here. Can you get a link for us? Uh, sure. I mean, it's outdated, but yeah, sure. It was done back in ZBrush 4R6, I think, or something like that. Man, I need to take that down. <laughs> it's okay though. It's still there's still relevant information in it. But I think uh I th I think it's kind of uh misleading because it says 3D character workshop on my gum road and that is not it. If you do Dynamesh to your model and it decides to cover the hole you made with a boolean previously what's going on uh it will do that if you have uh open holes that's just how dynamesh works um yeah so it it means that you're yeah just close the holes off and it shouldn't do that sometimes it still does but it shouldn't and i really don't use Dynamesh much anymore because of those reasons. I that that's why I'm more of a a sculptress fan. This is lumpy lumpy. Okay. Yeah, sure, Sean. All right, let's cut this in a little bit more since we lost it here. I kind of want to bring it out.
<laughs> Mick Bobbles. Very funny. There we go. Can you set the res resolution of the sculptress brush to be constant and not based off the brush size? Yes, Robin, I showed it earlier. I can show you again. If you go under Stroke and you go under Sculptress Pro, and it's turned on, you just turn off this adaptive size. The adaptive size is what ties it to your brush size, and I'm not a big fan of that. I like constant. So if you turn this off, then uh, should be good to go. Now, the, the resolution of that is tied to your, no worries, um, the resolution of that is tied to your scene size. So if you, um, if you're, you're using Sculptors Pro and you drag this all the way to the left, and the triangles are still not small enough, then you'll need to scale your character up and that will make your triangles smaller relative to your scene size, if that makes sense. So, okay, let's color this guy up for funsies. That's some, that's some green green. How did you join the subtools without Dynamesh? I used something called Remesh by Union earlier in the stream, but it's under the gizmo menu uh, underneath this, uh, it's right here, Remesh by Union. And it will just stitch your objects together and not rebuild your entire mesh. Okay, we can fill this with this, this super bright green. Holy cow, green. That's green. <laughs> oh, funny. Okay. Let's get this yellow. I probably should have painted this before I put the legs down. But we still have polygroups. So we can hide them. How at this point can you clean the mesh? Well, you can either... Uh, well, um, Sculptors Pro, you can get it quite clean. Um, or you can Z-remesh it, or you can retopologize re it. Those are the things you can do. There we go. What are you trying to, I will, I promise I will be the biggest character sculpting just by watch your YouTube videos. Oh, awesome. Yeah, do it. And if you want to find my past streams, you can go to, um, just do a Google search for ZBrush Live. And uh, you can look for Amputee Frog. Yeah, Frog, somebody's eating his legs. <laughs> Frog's legs. Okay. Um, so if you go to ZBrush Live right here, and you can actually watch the current streams right here. See, it's playing right now. This is us kind of meta right now. But if you go to um, presenters or calendar or podcast and Z plays, let's go to presenters. And uh, you can see all the presenters. There's some goober right here. I, need, I really need a new picture. That's old. <laughs> anyway, all these amazing streamers here. And then you can see all the presenters and kind of what they're about. Um, here's mine. And if you click into here, you can see when I go live and some of my art here. And you can see all the past streams right here. Bum, 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 bum. Okay. okay. May I ask what is the difference with Sculptress Pro on compared to it off? Yeah, one second. Um, how do you select the exact same color as the concept on your sculpt? 
Uh, so you can eyedrop it using the letter C, as in cat, on your, on your keyboard. Um, but if you want to uh, select a color from your image, you have to have the spotlight ring showing. If this ring is not showing, then it will not work, okay? So just show the ring, hover over this, and, and hold down C, and you can select a, a color. That's it. Yep, you can use Z color if, like, if you're using uh, Pure Ref or something like that, you can use Z color to select from a, a an image that's not in your scene. Z color is a plugin. Uh, hey, what's up, Creative? I haven't seen you for a while. What printer do I use? I use a Form Two right now. And I also have a, a, a photon, an any cubic photon. I want to say photon torpedo. That's a for, photon. I have not printed anything on that one yet. Oh, it looks like we have some holes in our mesh. Weird. All right. Now shift will also blend color down. I don't know if you guys know that or not. Like if I want to blend this. What is up with the holes? There we go. So you can use close holes. I'm known as CG Eric on YouTube. I've been making computer animation for four years and I love what I do. The main purpose for making animation is to make people smile. I also love helping beginners with learning computer animation. Nice. New question, how do you bring up the transpose line? Um, it's a subset of the gizmo. So if you have the gizmo showing right here, all you need to do is click on this button right here and it'll switch to the transpose line. Okay, let's get his eyeballs. I'll make him a little yellow. When you shift and click, is the model not going to chand? What does chand mean? How much does ZBrush cost? Um, if you have to go to pixelogic.com and check, I'm not sure what it's going for right at the moment. When you shift and click, is the model not going to 
Oh, I think you're trying to say change. Um, shift. Uh, shift is smooth. So when you're, you can see how it changes to blue. That means you're in smooth mode. So then you can just smooth the surface. So yes, it will change. moving the eyeballs with it let's separate these out <laughs> needs a fly on his nose for sure uh, it's been a minute. Got myself Ender 3 Pro from... Nice. I I don't know about that one. Let's see. He's cross-eyed, but that works. All right, let's give him some eyebrows. I'm just going to squish a spear for his eyebrows. Why not? They're just so simple. Thanks. Ribbit. I just need to get the yellow up in here closer. They smooth this out and brought it back down. There we go. All right. Got about 10 minutes left. Um, let's paint some spots on him, shall we? Okay, with this, now you can use the paint brush with Sculptress Pro. Is, is ZBrush hard to learn? Uh, it can be. Um, and it depends on how quickly you learn and how much artistic ability you already have. Um, because uh, artistic skills will transfer. ZBrush is a tool. Um, just like a paintbrush is a tool. So... If you know anatomy, you know design, it's going to be it's going to come easier to you. But if you're just starting out on both technical and art, then it's going to take you a bit longer. Yeah, you just need to practice, 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 practice. Okay, let's grab See if this color is black, black. Uh, let's do a kind of a purplish black. Ah, uh, thanks. I try and speed up people's learning with my workshop for sure. That's kind of the goal of the whole thing. Okay. Now, if we turn on Sculptus Pro, 
you can see you can get denser or turn this down and it should give us a better edge but it's not giving us a great edge so let's uh the skill is also included in graphic design um yeah design skills okay let's do the save as here Okay, I'm going to scale him up in the scene. So if you look at the floor, this is how big he is compared to my grid. I make him quite large. Okay. Now my my uh, triangles will be smaller when I paint. See that? See how much more dense they are? And that way I can get tighter edges when I paint without having to rebuild or um, like subdivide my model. I don't know what's going on right there. Oh well. Uh, do you do any version control? A little bit. Um, I did when I was working professionally. But now that I'm working from home, um, I just do save as and use my quick saves. Thanks, HD. Welcome back. Um, and my paint, yeah, I'm using my hard paint brush. And again, you can get these brushes for free over at 3D Character Workshop. Yeah, this is, you can honestly do that with any brush. This is just, this has the focused, the focus of the brush, the focus shift turned way up. So it's nice and crispy. And then it has Z add turned off because it's just coloring. Yeah, yeah. So I turned sculpting. So this is actually increasing the density of the mesh to give me tighter edges on my paint. Yep. <laughs> okay. It's good. It's still kind of bleeding a little bit on those edges, but Not too bad. Let's paint something here. Okay, now let's do some asymmetrical on the back. Uh, 
There we go. Froggy. Let's put him in perspective. There we go. Hooray, frog. All right, so uh, next Monday we'll start on the princess. And we'll be having her holding him, kissing him. <laughs> Are you using a graphics tablet? I'm using a Cintiq, a 27-inch Cintiq. But that is not what you need to use. Uh, you don't need to invest in something like that. Just get something with pressure sensitivity. The best you can afford with pressure sensitivity. But it can be as cheap as a Wacom bamboo and still work. <laughs> Anastasia, congrats, it's a frog. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Who's your favorite cartoon character growing up? Probably the Pink Panther. I would, um, or Garfield. I don't know. There's a lot. There's a lot. So. All right, you guys. <laughs> he was smooth, that guy. He's like, oh. <laughs> Let's, one last, we got one minute. I'm just going to pinch. I'm going to pinch his lips. Thank you from France. Yes, you're welcome. And as always, one more time, you can get these brushes for free over on the website, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. Crank this up. And uh, I also teach an online course called the 3D Character Workshop. And if you're interested in learning how to create characters like this one, please feel free to join us. I gotta turn on uh, symmetry before I pinch these. There we go. That's better. That's cleaner. All right. Yes, you are most welcome. And a huge shout out to Neil for dropping those spicy links. <laughs> it's always a pleasure. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for hanging out with me today. We're up to 200 people watching. I can't, I can, I, I always, it just blows me away. So uh, thank you so much. Have a wonderful week, everybody. Happy sculpting. And we'll see you next Monday. All right. Cheers. Take care.